partly because it's always been done that way, mostly because it's in a, in a contrary sounding sort of way, it's faster. Uh, even though you could simply type a teleprompter change very quickly and have it and have it gone, rather than completely rewrite with a, uh, a sharpie, rewrite a whole a whole new line on a whole new card, it's it's easier uh, because changes can be made on the fly and they can be made by somebody else while we're on the air with with the with the cue cards. Mostly though, it's because of uh, of the the eye line. I mean, most prompters are, are mounted on cameras. So if you're looking at a, a prompter to read, it looks like you're actually looking at the home audience, where most of the time we want it to create the illusion that, that, that I, I'm looking at this person here. And uh, I don't, the camera that's on me, I don't, want to, I don't want to be looking right at that teleprompter. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, so if I have my cue cards right over here, I've created the illusion that I'm looking at him even though I'm looking at, at, at the cue cards. And those cue cards can move. Now, the, the, now, uh, now I'm the host of this, this uh, talk show. I'm talking to this person, so my cue cards are here. But now I want to turn to the audience so that cue card operator can run over beside that lens. And now it does create the illusion that I'm looking right at the home audience. Mm -hmm. And I can also have a set out here in the middle so I can look away from him like this and pick up a, a chunk of dialogue out, out in the front and then come back here because my cue cards are here. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, it's there are flexible roll-around prompters that we could be using, but that wouldn't it, sometimes we want we want this actor to suddenly look down at the floor, see a, talk to a dog down here, and then look up and then talk to the audience and look. So it, it's it's simpler with cue cards. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's a person running around, and there has to be light on the cue cards, and it creates its own issues on, on lots of different levels. We rehearse on Thursdays and Fridays with just one set because we just don't have the time and the manpower to turn out the multiple sets that we have on Saturday. Many hosts are better at it than others, uh, but it seems to work. Mm. Now, the same way we use a we use a crane, which is a, a gigantic, unwieldy piece of equipment, where a camera operator actually sits in a bucket up with the, this giant camera. There are two men who handle the arm uh, of the crane manually. There's a driver who sits in the back of this thing. It's a gigantic piece of equipment. And nobody in television uses a crane like that, certainly not in a live show anymore. We use uh, what's called a jib, which is a remote camera, a small camera on, on, a, on an extended arm that's handled down f f by one man at the bottom, and he's got remote controls, and he can move that thing anywhere he wants. It's much more flexible. It doesn't take up space. doesn't run into audience. It doesn't block other cameras to get into it. But we use the crane because... It looks so cool to that live audience. That live audience says, oh man, look at that big piece of machinery. This is like old time show business. This must be important and significant. And that's Lauren's sense of keeping that audience uh, engaged and invigorated and part of, the, of, of what makes this work. Yeah. Now we happen to have a, a brilliant crane team that can do more with that equipment than anybody's ever done in the history of cranes. But it still to me is, old-fashioned and restrictive and not what I would prefer but because of what Lauren thinks I understand how it it works